All right, can we get Malachi chapter 4, verse 1? Um, be careful for a title. This morning, I call it Carriers of Life. Carriers of Life. First and foremost, I want to please help me preach to your neighbor. Guard up the loins of your mind. Okay. They ask him whether he knows what that means. Guard up means to tie up. So think straight. Don't think a wire. I want you to think straight this morning because the word I'm bringing by the grace of the Lord this morning uh, is going to open your eyes and uh, correct what we have received in the past that is, that is wrong. All right, Malachi chapter 1 verse 4, chapter 4 verse 1 says, For behold, the day cometh. We are in that day. So don't look again for another day. We are in that day. And this day is particularly talking about the father's season. There's a father's season. You remember in Acts chapter 4, Jesus told them in response to a question, when will thou restore the kingdom? But he said it's not for you to know. Because it was not appointed time for, for, for the kingdom to be manifested in praise of the earth. So we are in the season called the father season. And this season is a season that is characterized by three basic things. It's a season of full maturation of the church. It's a season of divine judgment on the face of the earth. And it's also a season when God will reward his church. This is the day we've been looking for. This is the day that Jesus said we should look up for our redemption draw it now. And, and, and it says for that day, it says that that day shall burn as an oven. So it's not going to be a comfortable day for those who carry on, who carry on living their life in, in, in the life that, that, is, uh, that is in the blood of the flesh. So if you are depending on the life that is in the blood of the flesh, I don't know how you're going to survive these days. I don't know. And that's the reason why the Lord is asking me to talk about this issue of life, carrying the eternal life on the face of the earth. You know, a lot of people believe that because the scripture said that whosoever believeth uh, in the name of the Son of God, he said he shall not perish but have everlasting life. So he automatically you have, they, they, they believe that they have everlasting life. Now, what I normally ask is this. What I normally ask is this. If truly you, are, you have eternal life instant time, if you have it immediately you believe, then let's do an hypothetical test. Because I've heard me say this before. And let me repeat it again in case you, were, you have never heard that from, uh, from me before. Let's do an hypothetical test. Let's slice your hand. You know, one easy way to die is just cut your wrist and bleed off. Cut the wrist. Let the blood flow out. Now, if you don't die, then I will agree with you that you have eternal life. But if you die, then you have, you, have, you have lied. Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it abundantly. What does that mean? It means they will, they will have an increasing measure of life until they have the fullness of that life. The fullness of that life. Hallelujah. So that day will burn as an oven means that it is a day of harvest. Let me say something here also that you must know. Jesus, in all the parables, the parable of the tears and the parable of the nets, said something that is very significant that many don't pay attention to. The harvest that people talk about in these last days is an harvest of souls into the kingdom. That many will, will come to the, to the saving of Christ. Uh, that is a lie. <laughs> you want to know why I'm saying that? Okay, this is it. COVID-19, how many were decimated? Perhaps about, uh, is it up to 25 million? Um, I was trying to Google search this morning to find out how many so far. I've not been, I've not been following track. I lost, I, 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 just, I, just, I just left as all the tracking and following the, all the, all the uh, statistics. But assuming it's about 20, 25, I'm not so sure. Is it 25? Okay, okay, okay. Number of deaths, uh-huh. Number of deaths, the number of deaths is less than 2 million. Now, are, the population of the world is about 7 billion conservatively. And if you use that statistics to do your calculations, uh, one, one, 2 million is less than 
It's less than 1% of the world's population. Now, what about when you have 30%? Think about that. How many of you know that uh, in the book of Revelation, the Bible talks about seven seals and the seven judgments? You better, you better start finding out what the season you are so that you know how you live in this season. Can I advise you? You better find out the season you are and you begin to live, live your life as one who is in a season that is, that is very dangerous but yet very exciting and very wonderful. It's a double-edged day. It's a day of full maturation of the church. And it's a day to carry life. I mean carry life abundantly. Not just in a, not just, not just in a, in a trickle. And those that, that emphasize on carry anointing, anointing will not help out in this season. There's, I hope you know there's a difference between carry anointing and carry life. And so, if you carry anointing, anointing gives you ability to function and do so many things. But anointing does not give you the life, except you do some things. Jesus said, the word that I speak, they are spirit first and foremost, and then life. What is the connection? What is the gap between the spirit and the life? Obedience, a doing of the word, a walking in the word, a walking in the light of the revelation will produce a life. Hallelujah. All right, so now, so I, I, want to, I want to get somewhere. I, I've broken this message into two segments. The first segment is to, first of all, let you know that this is a season when eternal life is going to manifest on the face of death. Another school of thought that has been so wrong is to think that eternal life is going to be taken, we're going to have eternal life in heaven. Let me quickly give you three scriptures before I move on to what, what is the core of the message the Lord will have me to share. If you look at, first and foremost, where do I start? I'm trying to see where I start. Eternal life is meant for us here on earth. And there are three scriptures that I'm going to draw your attention to. You know, we normally quote Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 and 2. Give me, that, uh, give me that ver- those verses. But we fail to read 19 and 20, 21 and 19, 20, 21, 22. We normally quote, arise, I will rise and I will shine. As if your shining is by your own ability. Or by your, your arising is by your own ability. The reason why you are going to arise and shine is given in verse 2. And look at even that verse 1. Before you go to that verse, verse 2, look at verse 1 first. Let's look at it. It says, for your light is come. The reason why you will arise is because your light is come. And the glory is risen upon you. So what is the light? What is the glory? Two things. Say, arise and shine for the eyes is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Verse 2 says, give me verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord. So what is the light? The Lord. Now, we're in a season when the Lord himself it will come down and visit his own people. And be a son of righteousness unto them. There are three principal things. Let me, let me give you a gist a bit before I move on. There are three principal things that a tree needs to have to grow. That's why I'm going to talk more about how you draw life in this city. That's, that's where I'm going. But I need to give you a precursor. I need to get your mind ready for what. So that I won't just talk in vain. Because you must take this word serious. And you must think straight. When I say think straight, I mean you, you think the way God wants you to think. Stop thinking the wrong way. For your thoughts are not his thoughts. Your ways are not his ways. We need to begin to realize that God will begin to visit his own people. Those that have respect to his name. My, uh, King James says those that, have, those that fear the name of the Lord. Another translation says that those that fear the name of the Lord. Or that have respect for the name of the Lord. And what does it mean to have respect for the name of the Lord? What is the name of the Lord that we're talking about here? The name Jesus. Jesus means what? The Savior. When the angel gave brought the message, he said, He shall be called what? Jesus, for he shall save his people from what? So if he will save his people from their sin, will they be saved? I ask you a question. Will they be saved? Will there be remission for sins? Is there remission for sins? 
And he's going to sit as a refiner's fire and full of soap to thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. Without, there will be no blemish, no spot, not, no wrinkle, no, no whatsoever. He will thoroughly purge that the house of labor may bring forth good works. Let me paraphrase it that way. So, what we are talking about here is those that have respect, please, for goodness sake, don't, 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 don't think it is everybody that is going to be saved. These days are dangerous. The day is going to burn like a oven. The wicked shall become stubble and they shall be burnt by the day. What does that mean? Now, who is the wicked? The wicked is not necessarily all those who are yet to be saved. He's talking about, first and foremost, those that offend and do iniquity. I was trying to, rec- I was trying to remind you of the parable of the tears and the parable of the, of the, uh, of the nets. Both agree together because the net will gather good and bad. And there's going to be a severance, a cutting off. So what you call harvest is not what many people think. The harvest is not about great numbers, large numbers, as if God is going to save the whole world. No, no. There's going to be a severance. Even in the fold, even in the church of God, there's going to be a severance of the sheep and the goat. Those that offend and those that do iniquity, we have no part in the kingdom of God. So let it be here, let it be known today. Let it be known today that what God is more interested in, particularly today, is about giving life and giving life to those who are ready because it's the day of judgment and it's only those who carry life, who carry life. Those that carry anointing will not make it. Those who carry anointing, you can say you, you wrought miracles, you do this and do that, it's not going to save you, it's not going to help you at all in this season. You must learn to carry life. You must carry the life of God on the inside. The life of God must flow on the inside of you and must come to, the, to, the, to that fullness that God expects of, of, of you. The standard of that measure that God expects of you. So, now, we are told that he's going to come take me back to Malachi chapter 4. I'm dwelling, I'm dwelling, okay, before we go there, before we go there, before we go there, sorry. Before we go there, go to verse 19, 20, 21, 22. I said many times when we quote this scripture, we don't read verse 19, 20, and 22. Let's read together there and I will show you something here. Are you in verse 19 already? All right. He said, The sun shall be no more thy light by day, and the moon, by reason of his brightness, be the light, be your light. So instead of the sun and the moon, what is going to be the replacement? And what is the implication of that? I want, you to, I want to link it up with revelations because, you see, you need to understand that there's a transition of time here. There's an end. God is bringing an end to mortality on the face of the earth. God is, is bringing an end to mortality and we're entering the, the dispensation of immortality. God is bringing an end to the works of Satan, the works of death, the works of sin on the face of the earth and he's bringing righteousness on the face of the earth. God is bringing an end, a closure to all that is completely darkness. All that is, that is, that is, that is outside the purpose and outside the counsel of God. All the works of iniquity, all the works of, of darkness are going to be, as a matter of fact, cities like Gomorrah, cities like Sodom, cities like Jericho will be totally annihilated on the face of the earth. Before long, before long, we will, not, we will not hear of some cities anymore. Some cities will not be in existence anymore. Because they become ashes. All right. So it says here, it says, the sun shall not give you light anymore. The moon, for a reason of his brightness, will not give you light, light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. And thy God, thy glory... Verse, next verse, verse 20. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. Can you see that? See, when, when, when the scripture is repeating itself and bringing perspectives, different perspectives, it's telling you the necessity of the fulfillment of that scripture. So thy sun shall no more go down simply means, means that 
you, there will never be a time, there will be a seizure of life anymore. You know, many times, after we have given our life to Christ, there are seasons when we are up and there are ups and downs, up and down, up and down, up and down. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down, tomorrow you are you're full of energy and you are, you, are, you are filled with vitality, spiritual vitality and all of that. And then all of a sudden you, you go limbo. And some are even dead. Like the, like the, Sardis, like the church in Sardis. But he says that will never happen anymore. Because now something is going to happen that is different because the Lord himself as a son of righteousness will come upon you and shine upon you and cause you to go forth like the calves of the store. Okay? And grow up. One translation, King James said, you will grow up. Another translation says, you will leap. Whether, you, whether, whether of the two, both sink into the thoughts of God and purpose of God for these days. Now, look at verse 21. Look at verse 25. Before we look at Revelation 20, uh, 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, take note of that, the work of my hands that I may be glorified. So you are, a, you are going to be a planting. God is likening you, is likening, is likening us to, uh, to a tree, a planting. And that speaks significantly. Because a tree, like I said, needs three things to grow to maturity. I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Take, take us now to Revelation 21. I want to prove to you. I want to show you. This is one of the scriptures that show that eternal life is here on earth. I have three scriptures I can give you. I will take you also to Joel chapter 2 verse 8. The army of the Lord. The, the, army, the army of the Lord that will leap over every wall, leap over every obstacle, leap across every barrier. And that, 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 coins, I mean, that, that talks, I mean, that agrees with what the translation, those who translate it to mean like the cars of the soul. So he, he, the, the, the son of righteousness coming upon us is going to give us life and that life is translated into strength, divine strength, ability that no man can have, no man can, can have, or no, um, no man in the flesh can have, no man in, 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 in the natural body can have. I mean, how do you explain how the army will leap over the mountains? Leap. I mean, let's get there. You see what the army will do. And you see in verse 8 that they will fall on the sword and they will not die. That's not ordinary. <laughs> okay, go to Revelation 21. Look at verse, look at verse uh, 21. Go to 21. 22, move to 22. Now he's talking about the city. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. What is that saying? What that is telling us is that this city that Abraham looked for, and by the way, we are not called to seek heaven. Because Abraham didn't, was not seeking heaven. Abraham was not seeking heaven. Abraham was seeking a city built without hands. Abraham was seeking a city where the architect and the builder is God. Where, where the infrastructure is not, it is not, it is not physical infrastructure. Now he's talking about the, the, the temple itself. It is God himself housing his own people. It is a fulfillment of what Jesus said, that I may be in them and they in us. In other words, God is coming down to live in, in his people. And his people living in, in him. Garrison, protected, covered by the glory, by the light of God. So, he said, I saw... No temple there, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Next verse. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. Why? Because the glory of God lights in it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. <laughs> oh, wow, 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 wow. I pray God will give you understanding of what I'm, what I'm bringing to you today. Now, don't stop there because, you see, this city that we're talking about is going to descend out of God from heaven on earth. And if you read on, it says, All the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth, not the kings of the heaven, the kings of the earth, those kings that are, kings here is talking about people with substance, people with wealth, people with honor, people with, uh, people with, uh, people with uh, influence. 
deal with influence. People who have geographical influence. I mean, people who have, who have what it takes to rule, to dominate. He said they shall bring in their glory and honor into it. And their gates, their, the gates shall not be shut. That's exactly what Isaiah prophesied also in Isaiah 60. So it is here or not. Eternal life is here or not. Stop thinking that you're until you get to heaven before you have eternal life. Jesus, says, Jesus said there's a generation that will not taste it until they see the kingdom of God come on earth. So there's a, there's a generation. And that generation is my generation. That generation is this generation. For we must carry life. And not just carry life in a, in a, in a little measure. We must carry the life of God in such an abundance that nothing, no weapon, fashion against us can even, can even prosper. I pray God will open your eyes to some of the things that are coming. Some of you, do, you, you think COVID is, a, COVID is anything. COVID is just a little dust, a tiny dust. Each stroke is coming, each stroke. I, I don't know whether you have wo- monitored what is happening in Oregon, U.S. How many of you are aware of what is happening in Oregon? The wire, you, you heard about the fire. Uh-huh. What, what gave birth to that fire? Temperatures began to rise to 49. 49 degrees centigrade. I had it. And that, of course, fire, you only need three things to be in place for fire to, to ignite. You need heat, you need oxygen, you need fuel. Material, material called fuel. Once the three things are there, combustion will take place easily. Fire will spark up. So the heat stroke that is coming, there's a heat stroke. The wind will be held. God will give a command to angels to hold the wind. And you know what that means? If the winds are held back, the air is not circulating. Can you imagine if there were no fan? There was, the sun is very hot in a cool. Why do you put the fan? Is it not to cool down so that the heat can be blown away? But when the heat is now withdrawn, what do you think is going to happen? Heat stroke. It's coming. It's not long from now. Heat stroke. Heat stroke is coming. So I don't know how, what kind of body you will have that will survive that. If you have a natural body, a normal natural body, I don't know how you're going to survive that. There are other things again that are coming up. I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm not saying this to scare you at all. You don't need to be afraid. I'm just trying to push you to understand that you just go to, you have to go for something. There's something my generation, my people must go for in these last days. And we must be prepared. Give me Joel chapter 2. Give me Joel chapter 2. Let me just show you another one. Another one you find in Isaiah, Isaiah 25. Isaiah said there, we don't need to read that. He said, on this mountain shall the Lord make a feast of fat things. You know, some of you know that scripture. Of wines on leaves. Okay? And it said, it shall be well refined. And then the result shall be that on this mountain shall death be swallowed up. What is the mountain that Isaiah was prophesying about? about? Isaiah was prophesying about places where God will manifest his presence. As God not said, he said, this is the mountain I will dwell in. And then the other mountains were saying, ah, why is it that it is this mountain you want to dwell in? Why don't you come and dwell on, in us? I don't know whether you've read that in Psalm 69. He said, the hill of God. God I mean, he, said, he talks about the hill of God, where God dwells. He said, where, what is, what is what, I'm paraphrasing now, why is that you other hills are, are, are jealous because God chooses this, this hill? If you read that Psalm 69, you see that God is a choosing God he chooses where he wants to dwell. So he's not going to dwell in every place. He's going to dwell in a mountain. And that mountain is talking about an assembly where his people are. Who have respect to his name. And the result of that feast will be what? A swallowing up of death here on earth. Think straight. I said think straight. Think straight. Time to think straight. Joel chapter 2. Give me verse 6. Let me start from verse 6. I'm going to verse 8. He said, but before their face, the people shall be much pained. That is the wicked. All faces shall gather blackness. That's, those are the wicked. 
that shall become stubborn. Verse 7. Verse 7. They shall run like mighty men. So that's talking about their strength. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Verse 8. The way I'm going. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not what? They shall not what? What is that telling you? <laughs> when the day when people will carry gun and will shoot you, and Odeshi, you say Odeshi. Thieves will come trying, wanting to kill you, but they cannot kill you. Ministry government or whatever government will be in place, they will, they will, they will as plot them, they will plot together and say, let's go and get, take them out, take them off, take them out. Like the Americans will say, take them, take him out. <laughs> but they can't take you out. They can't take you out. It doesn't matter what they use. Biological, chemical, mechanical, nuclear, Whatever. Doesn't matter what they use. You can't be wounded. Alright, let's go back because I don't want to waste too much time. I want to, let me go to the second segment. I'm going to finish my message. I'll finish the message. Don't worry. I'll finish the message. Now, give us, that's why I didn't, I, I'm preaching hands free. You can see I didn't bring any, I didn't bring anything. Uh, give me, give me, go back to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4, back again. Let's go back to Malachi, Malachi chapter 4. He said, For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud without exception. So, if you are full of pride, <clears throat> better watch it. And all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh, shall burn them up. Sell the Lord of hosts. They shall leave them neither root nor branch. No trace. Verse 2. He said, but now, for to you that have respect to my name, shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Healing in his wings. The Lord knows all our, all our infirmities. He knows about our blindness. He knows about our lameness. He knows how, how weak we are. But that weakness is not going to continue because, because he said, I will build my church and where my church as my mighty army will advance against the gates of hell, no power shall be able to withstand it. It's not, it's not what we're doing now. The, the warfare we do now is uh, <laughs> it's more or less like uh, uh, how do I... We, we tend to do it offensively but we're not even doing offensive, offensive uh, warfare. Because we, we, most of all the warfare we do now is fire brigade and traditional warfare. <laughs> we do traditional warfare. When, when, we are, when we're in service, we begin to bind. We're going to bind. Eh? Well, I don't know why we always feel, think that you must always bind and lose at every service before you start the service. There's madness in tradition, being traditional. There's madness in it. Honestly speaking. I go around, I, 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 I attend the other service, and I see how, how people, when they start service, they start binding. I want to do this. Why do you have to bind and lose all the time? Why are you so too conscious about the devil? So, there's a healing that he wants to do. And that's why you have, you have to have the son of righteousness. Now, let me begin to uh, say something about the tree. A tree requires three things. If you're a science person, you will know this already. But if you're not a science person, let me inform you. There are three things that uh, trees require. They need air or carbon dioxide. You know, they, they, give, they, they, they take in carbon dioxide. We, we, the oxygen they give out, we, we take in. We take in uh, oxygen. Now, they also need sunshine. And water. Three things. How many things? Now, let me ask you a very, very important question. If one of them is not available, what's going to happen to the tree? Will it survive? 
will it grow? Now, let me, let me, let me give you a recent discovery. There's a place at the back of my, of the, of our building. There's a, there's a neighbor who plants a cocoa yam. And you know, for some time now, the rain had ceased. For almost about a month or, even the ones that rained, all the rains that came around, uh, was it uh, May, uh, about two months ago, were very scanty. So if you go to the farm now, even there was so much of sunshine and the uh, air has not, has not ceased, the leaves began to turn yellow. If you get there now, most of the leaves are brown. And I know that cocoa yam is not going to do well. It's not going to do well. It's not. So, the Lord just brought back this scripture. That's how this message began to boil in my spirit. Of course, Malachi chapter 4 has, always, has continually been in my heart from the time I heard about COVID. From the day COVID appeared on the face of the earth, Malachi chapter 4 kept on ringing my spirit that we are not meant for sickness and disease at all. This God we serve is not, is not, not, not only going to take care of our physical healing, but particularly is going to take care of our spiritual healing. So a tree cannot survive. If you take out one of these three, the tree, the plant cannot survive. I hope you have what I'm saying. This is a reality. And as it's true naturally for a tree, so it is for, for, for a spiritually, for us believers. So which means, if these three things are lacking in your life, there's no way you can grow. And that's the problem where, why many of, you are, many of us are not growing. Is that how two things are available? One is missing. Is that how, uh, you have water, but no air? Or you have, you have water and air, no sunshine. Or you have sunshine and uh, air, no water. And there's no way you can, you, any, any of us can survive or do well or grow well and be strong like he wants us to be strong if those three things are not there. So which means there are three things that must simultaneously run together, flow together in our lives. Let me try and decode those three things spiritually for you. Let's begin from sunshine. The sunshine. Sunlight is required by plants to for a process called photosynthesis to produce food. Okay? Is that not so? Science students, you have heard about photosynthesis. The process by which plants manufacture their food, <laughs> the presence of oxygen and uh, we still remember some of those things. Okay, in those days, we do agbeiru kweso kale before we start understanding them. We first of all, load it up and then <laughs> we try to understand. All right, so it must be that now the sunshine also is necessary. And in this, in this case now, let me tell you what the Lord will begin to do in these days. Don't be surprised that if you really have respect to his name, the Lord will begin to visit us in our closets. Personal revelations. There are personal revelations that each one of us must have. That, you have heard me say this before. It is what you know, you know, you know by yourself that you know and you know that builds you. 70% of what builds you is what you discover by yourself. 30% can come from other places. You have heard me say this before. 70% of what builds you. I thank God for the school I, went, I attended. I never... We, ne we not always never had uh, teachers for all the subjects. There were, for a long time, no teacher for math, long time, no teacher for physics, long time, no teacher for chemistry, long time. In fact, one of my geography teachers decided to stop teaching us because he felt I joined the band of, <laughs> the band of, God of a bad boys. So he said he's not going to teach us anymore geography. He, let, he, he, he abandoned us. And lo and behold, I was the only one who eventually sat for geography. Of course, geography I had P7. I didn't fail it completely. <laughs> but I knew what I had to, uh, the extra work I had to do. I didn't have enough time like I had for maths and physics and all of that. But I wish he had not abandoned, I, I wish he had not abandoned us. So, what am I saying? Most of the things that, what has helped me to today is the fact that I rely on one-on-one with God. 
I can say God taught me mathematics at, at the closing stage of my life in, in the secondary school. I was well ahead of my, my contemporaries. I treated topics like latitude and longitude without, without help. I treated construction and all those stuff without help. I relied. God has always been in the generation of the righteous. God will all, has always been in the, your generation in the, from the beginning, even when you did not know him. So he was teaching me. By the end of the day, I scaled through. I, I was able to get admission to the university. Many, many of my contemporaries could not. So don't let me go too far. What I'm trying to let you know is that God will begin to visit you personally. He will beam revel. He will cause you from the the Bible talks about in Second Corinthians chapter four about the the light of God, the God who commands light to shine. He's going to command the light of God to shine from the face of Jesus, from the face of Christ, to give you a revelation knowledge that is personal to you. There are revelations in the Bible. Sometimes when I begin to wonder, why is it me? Why am I different from others that I say something and people begin to look at me funny? As if I'm speaking Greek or I'm, 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 I'm trying to preach my own words. These things are for you. They are for us. And there are some, some things you should know that nobody will have the exclusive right other than you. For who can know the things of a man except the spirit of a man that is in him? Or who can know the things of God except the spirit of God? But we are blessed because eyes that have not seen, ears that have not heard, what has not entered into the heart of men, by the Spirit of God, God is able to open it to us. He's able to reveal it to us. So, sunshine, the sunshine that will come upon you in these days is not going to be ordinary. And you must walk in that light. You must walk in that light because the little light you have that you do not walk in, Okay, will not help you. Will not give you more. He that is unfaithful in the little cannot expect God to give him more. So, whatever God is revealing to you, walk in it. Start walking in that light. And as you continue in your walk, it is in your walking in the light that will bring you into greater light. For the path of the jaws is like a shining light, shining brighter and brighter until the day of perfection. If you will, Give yourself to the revelation of God that is bringing to you in this season. I am telling you that not long from now, you will flow into a dimension of life that the devil cannot resist. That the gates of hell cannot withstand. We must be carriers of life in these last days. Carriers of life. The life of God. So your work is number one. Your work should go with the sunshine. So, for the plant, it's the sunshine. For you as a believer, it's your work. Work in the light that God gives you. That's number one. Number two is the water. Every plant draws water from the roots. Every plant takes in the water. And whether it is uh, convenient or not, whether it's hot or not, if I, in the old days, the other season, that's when plants even take more water. And they go through it. Well, don't let me go into that. But what I'm trying to bring out is there is this. Is that the water can only come in through a process of meditation. Psalm 1 verse 1 and verse 2 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of his comfort. But, but, is the light. It's in the law of the Lord. And in his law, the he meditates, Day and night, okay, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. So, which means your meditation is the process by which you, you draw. And please, I will have study because there cannot be meditation without study. You have to give yourself, and the study I'm talking about here now is, is, that, is this. You see, when it comes to you as a son of righteousness, when he begins to visit you as a son of righteousness, he will give you, he will open scriptures to you. Scriptures, there are scriptures that will begin to open to you in these days. Maybe before now, the scriptures are not been opening to you. Expect a turn around. Expect a turn around. Scriptures will begin to open. The book of Revelation has been so difficult for people to know. In fact, I remember those days when I first gave my life to Christ. When I get to Revelation like that, I, I stumble and wobble and do all. I try to, you know, just read whatever I can read, but tell, I'm going to be frank with you. 
That scripture was not opening up at all because it was not time for me to, 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 to understand most of these things, those things. But in the last 10, 15 years, I tell you, the book of Revelation has opened seriously to me. It has opened seriously to me. So I know, I won't say I know everything, I, but I know something that I need to, that will help me at least to navigate in these last days. I know so much. And I, 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 I'm, I'm see, there are still so many things I'm still asking the Lord about. For example, I'm asking the Lord about how, what is the mark of the beast? Is it going to be just insertion of a, uh, because some people believe it's a chip. Some people believe it's a chip. Are you it's sad? But I think it's beyond that. <laughs> I think it's beyond that. But when it's time, God will reveal it. You see, sometimes God keeps some things secret because he doesn't want the enemy to know so that he can checkmate the enemy. He will release those things. That we, he, will give, he will tell us everything we need to know, but he will tell us at the right time. So don't be afraid. But I thank God at least that is happening so that you will know that <laughs> you are not living in those days some 10, 15 years back when there was something like a microchip. Nobody could believe, of course, a lot of people believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, that there will be no tribulation and that would have gone before the Antichrist will appear. That's not even correct. Go and read the Bible very well. Antichrist will happen. Well, do you know that 42 months was given to, to Satan to, to exhaust all his, uh, all his works? 42 months was also given to the church to grow into full maturity concurrently, and it's concurrent. And that's, that explains the mystery of uh, the seed and the uh, wheat and the tears. He said, don't, don't uproot it. Let them grow together. Mystery of iniquity and mystery of goodness are operating simultaneously concurrently. They are operating concurrently and they are going to grow together until the day of harvest. And can I tell you, that explains why there's going to be an army because there's going to be a war. There's going to be a war. Just like there was war in heaven and the devil to be casted out. He knows his time is too short now, so he's going to do everything to fight. And don't be discouraged. If, if, if you, you find there's so many, much opposition, you're across your path. He's going to throw everything, throw everything, do everything, but don't worry. We are winners. <laughs> We're more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. So now, so, meditation, please. Study, study to approve yourself. No, Paul said, study in such a way that you are approved of God. 2 Timothy 2.15. Can I describe that kind of study? Can I describe it to you? There's a kind of study, when, when some people study, there's no way God can do much. There's no way God can do much. There's a kind of study you, you just sit down. And you say, no. Lord, <laughs> you must show me something in this thing today. You, you are bent on, I remember there was one time, uh, uh, I was reading in Proverbs seven pillars of wisdom. And I was bent on, Lord, <laughs> you must show me, you must give me the meaning of this thing. I, 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 I stood on that passage of the scripture for a long time. And I couldn't get much. So I left it. But I knew it was not time for me to understand it. But you know, in this season, no, no. Everything must be open to you. If you will search, there are so many resources to you, available to you. You have, you have Google search, you, have, you can search the Bible with your, with your Google uh, search engine and so many things. There are so many. So you can't, there's nothing you are looking for that you can't get today. If you know how to search. So search, search deeply, you will find. Seek, you will find. Knock, it shall be open to you. Ask, you shall be answered. All right, then lastly, lastly, because I'm, I'm, I'm almost done. Lastly, is the air. The air. Air. What is air? Air, it means talking about what you're breathing. The atmosphere, the glory of God, the presence of God. The glory, the presence of, and that means your closet. Hello, somebody. So three things are vital that you must not lose sight of in these last days. Let me cap it. Let me summarize. One is your work. Two is your study stroke meditation. And three is your closet. 
these three things must be intact. It must be intact for life to flow. For you to continue to draw life and get more abundantly until you have eternal life. So, your closet is a place where you meet with God. Now, it is where you listen for the voice and where you carry the presence of God every day. You carry that presence out of their closet to where you go. So you are living your life conscious of the fact that you are not alone anywhere you go. And you are not relying on the anointing. But you are anointing. You are not relying on your ability, your eloquence. So you are not relying on whatever you have at all. But you are relying on the presence of God. And if the presence of God is with you, you will not do anything until he has, he has shown you what to do at that spot. Do you understand what I'm saying? So most of the things will happen to you these days. You will not need to lift your finger or lift your leg. You will not need to lay hands. As a matter of fact, ministration in these days is not going to be by laying on. What I'm saying is going to happen not long, not short from now. As I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself. I'm pressing, I'm desiring, if anything at all, uh, my honest expectation is this manifestation of eternal life. I want to carry the fullness. That's my greatest desire. That's my greatest desire. And please, this is the season. Because I know, I, from what I've seen in Scripture, from what I've heard prophetically declared, I know the dangerous times ahead. Dangerous as I'm at, times ahead. So where I can't afford to just live anyhow. I can't afford to just you know, live an ordinary life. I can't afford to just continue in this, in this body of flesh and blood. I want, I want a transfiguration. I want the promise of God, the redemption of my body. I want it to come to pass in my life. I want that to come to, my, to, to pass. So as we round up, I want to pray one single prayer. Lord, visit me as your son of righteousness. Let the son be no more my light and the moon. Let you, let your glory and your light be a replacement for that life source. That's the, that's the only single prayer I want to pray this morning. It's not, it's not a long prayer. Why don't you pray, Lord? Lord, visit me in this season. In this season, make me a carrier of the fullness of your life. Visit me, Lord. Visit me personally. Let a son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings upon me. Heal me, heal me. Heal my eyes. Heal my legs. Make me to leap like a calf of the storm. Make me to jump over every wall. Make me. Make me and lead me to the army. Make me an army in this day. I declare war. I declare war against every forces of weakness, against every wicked spirit, against every wicked power. Lord, it's time. It's time to visit your church. It's time. It's time, Lord, we open our hearts unto you. Help us, Lord. Visit us, Lord. Except you rise upon us and shine upon us, we can do nothing. Except you rise upon us and shine upon us, we remain ordinary. Except you rise and shine upon us, we remain the same. Lord, visit us.